Hey guys, it's Joshua at Deptive Channel, and today we're going to be discussing kind of a subject that you wouldn't think would be controversial, but my take on it might be. And my take is that your piston ring gaps being aligned actually doesn't matter. You might be saying, well, Josh, you don't know how engines work, and every manufacturer says that when you install piston rings, you cannot align them. And that's true. Don't go against your manufacturer's recommendations. But what I'm talking about here is this is a piston. This is a very simple piston. It's out of a Cat 3208, but it's only got two rings. Many engines have a lot more than that, but it's got a top ring, which is your compression ring. And then you've got a lower ring, which is known as your oil control ring on here. Now, most of the Cat engines I'm familiar with have three rings. They have two compression rings and one oil control ring. And there's on most piston rings, a gap, which is kind of needed because when you expand it to install it and then when it's in the cylinder, the gap is very, well, we'll just say the gap's much smaller because it's in the cylinder. This is uninstalled, so it has a larger gap. Now, when assembling a piston and putting the rings on, the manufacturers almost always tell you to align the gaps sep differently. So this one, it would tell you probably to go 180 degrees. So one gap's here, your other gap would be on the other side. And I have heard and said to myself that if they are aligned, meaning like that, you have a problem. You're gonna, and it actually is a problem because the compression gases coming down from the cylinder are gonna allow, and of course this gap's smaller when it's installed, folks, not that big. Um, it's gonna pass this ring and get past the other ring much quicker so you can have higher oil consumption and higher blow by. Now why, if that's true, why am I saying it doesn't matter? doesn't really matter because these move during operation and they can move significantly. Not only that, each ring can rotate at different speeds. So if this one's rotating at let's say one RPM per RPM, meaning every time it goes up, it's rotating once around and this one's rotating at 0.1 RPM, they're going to rotate at different speeds, which makes sense because this one's getting more oil, the lower one, oil control ring. This one's always getting more pressure as far as compression goes. They're also wider. They have different tension strengths on them, different heat. So it's very normal for them to rotate and it's very normal for them to rotate at different speeds. So I decided to do a little after hours experiment here with a C13 piston and liner. And this is a used one. This is a core assembly. So it's not like this is a customer's new one, but I'd pulled the rings off, made sure they weren't broken or seized. And then what I did is I put the liner in a vise and moved it up and down a hundred times to see if they would move. Now I had the rings perfectly aligned when I put them back in just to make sure I clean all the carbon off. And I just wanted to see if they would move at different rates. And like I said, this is not super scientific because obviously there's no compression here. They're not exposed to fuel. So I would expect whatever does here, which look at that, they moved. Looks like the oil control ring moved a little bit the opposite direction of the other gaps. The other gaps moved at different rates also. And I just, I found that interesting. Like I said, that's not super scientific, but just as a simple experiment, they do move. There's a good article on High Power Media that discusses a lot of this, and they did a lot of different studies on how much they rotate. And yes, they're gonna align at times. And maybe you pull one out because you have high blow by and you find, and you think that the ring alignment is causing it. Cat actually has an article stating that if you find that the piston ring alignment in the cylinder you think is causing high blow by, that is not the cause. So Cat even knows about this. And of course, Cat's not the only diesel engine manufacturer out there, but they're one of the bigger ones. So I've pulled lots of pistons out of engines and they're never set to where they were from the factory. If the factory actually set them 120 degrees apart, they're not still there. Now, obviously that is very biased because this engine might have tens of thousands of hours on it or a million miles. So obviously it's gone up and down quite a bit, but if it really mattered why your rings are set when you install them, then why doesn't it matter when you tear it down? Obviously they're moving folks. Now the ring orientation, meaning almost all rings have a top and a bottom. This is actually the top. This is actually the bottom because some of them they are either keystone cut or they're beveled, you probably won't be able to see it in this image, but usually they'll say up somewhere. And your 
Alignment as far as up or down matters a lot more than where the ring gaps are. Now, is it good that they rotate? Not that you can control it, but yes, it is. It's very important that they are rotating because what are they exposed to? A lot of carbon. Now, if carbon gets in and actually packs this area and they become frozen, a lot of times that's going to break the ring or it's going to seize and then that's going to actually cause cylinder damage because the ring is not able to break that carbon free. So actually you do want them to rotate. So what's really the point of this video, folks? Well, the point of the video is to say that when you do assemble your piston, and I've done this a lot too, I'm very particular about, oh, I gotta get this one, oh, that one's off by 10 degrees. It doesn't really matter, folks. Go by your manufacturer's recommendations, set them up. I would do this one about 180. But like I said, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. But do what manufacturer says, they're gonna move. There's nothing you can do about it. Kind of a shorter video, folks. So how about a little destruction of the week? So this week's Destruction of the Week, we actually have several. This is actually kind of a preview for an up, the next upcoming video. And these are C13 new pistons and new liners. And you might be saying, well, why are they disassembled with the rings off? Because they have rust on them. Why would they have rust and pitting and the ring grooves and pistons and the liners on a new C13 right out of the box? Well, you have to watch the video. Now these are C15 cylinder packs and they're also gonna be in the next video. And you can see, looks like the rings on this may have stopped rotating or became carbon packed. They are pretty damaged here. At least the liners are from vertical scoring on five and six. It's weird as this engine did not come in for any sort of weak cylinders or high blow by. Now the filler bands, as you can see, are pretty much disintegrated and completely destroyed. And what's weird is this engine was built only about two years ago. So that is weird. Look at all the coolant liner seals. I didn't cut these. They're just disintegrating. It's basically like little rodents were just eating them or acid was on them, something weird. Now this next one is really cool. This is from Jonathan. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna talk right now. <laughs> So he emailed me with this video and it just said C13 in a bus with a bad injector. As you can see, it's shooting flames out the exhaust. That is a super cool video. Now the next one here is from Anthony and it says C13 damage. Got a lot of C13 going on here. And this one obviously, eh, decided to drop a few valves, actually all of them in one of the cylinders. And yeah, that one's pretty much completely destroyed, unfortunately, for this engine. Destroyed all the cylinders, I'm sure it damaged the turbos and pretty good pictures he sent there. Thank you to Jonathan and Anthony for those pictures. Thank you everyone for watching this video and see you in the next one.